In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an interesting project. And Ralph is a customer of ours, and he came up with uh, an image that he found on the internet and says, hey, how do we go about creating images like this? And so what we're going to do is we're going to show you how actually pretty easy this is to create once you have the know-how. Um, so we're going to go ahead and show you how to do this. So we're going to grab our ellipse tool here in Corel Draw, hold down the control key, and drag out a little circle, switch over to our rectangle tool and draw out a little rectangle. We're going to switch to our pick tool, select both the rectangle and the circle and hit the C and E keys on our keyboard. That centers everything left to right, top to bottom. Now the purpose of that little rectangle is just to define the spacing between the words. That's the only purpose it has. We're going to pull down a couple of guidelines about like so and then this one here will pull down to about like so exactly where those guidelines are aren't that particular you'll see how we use them here momentarily let's go ahead and grab our text tool here in Corel draw and type out the word mom let's go ahead and come down here and type out the word basketball let's see if I know how to spell correctly here there we go basketball and then what we're gonna do is select both mom and basketball Go over to the Font tab here in Easy Stone and open up our Font Manager. Just because we have it, we might as well use it. Type in College, or Collegiate rather, and we're going to look for the Collegiate Black FLF. Now, I need to make a small adjustment here to basketball. I want to add a little bit of spacing between the lettering. And the reason I want to do that is because in the original design, you can see these letters are pretty tight up top here. And I'd like just a little bit more spacing there. So we'll add a little bit of spacing using our text spacing tool here in the font manager. Just click and hold. That'll add some additional spacing. Um, now I like I tend to get pretty particular, and I think there's just a little bit too much space between the B and the A. So I'll just slide it over, and probably the same between the A and the S. Just a little bit too much space, and we'll go ahead and take all of these and slide all of these over as well. Okay, so that takes care of that. Gives us that little bit of spacing. I know the change was minute, but I think it looks good. All right, so let me show you the magic in this. And when you see how ridiculously simple it is, you'll think, oh my God. And this is one of the really powerful things about CorelDRAW. I see so many people that I talk with every single day. It seems like the vast majority want to stay away from CorelDRAW because it's so daunting, it's so complicated, and it is so not. And in my opinion, everything is so complicated. Uh, even for somebody who's pretty technical like myself, when I think about using different programs, how I would accomplish something in that program versus doing it in CorelDRAW, well, to me, it's completely foreign in those other programs because of the way we do things here in CorelDRAW. But to me, the biggest selling point with CorelDRAW is the sheer amount of knowledge base that's available for free, mind you. If we, if we go on to YouTube and, and type any tool in CorelDRAW, three-point curve tool, envelope tool, contour tool, you'll see three dozen different videos, maybe even more, on that one specific topic. But if you do the same thing, for example, WinPC Sign, now it's a great program, it's got lots of capability, but the knowledge base available is very limited. So if you type in, you know, a specific function in WinPC, you might see a video or five. You won't see dozens and dozens. And that to me is, is a really uh, big deal. Um, because it's all about knowledge because I cannot explain to you like I said when you see how ridiculously simple it is to get this effect you're gonna think oh my goodness um, it really is that simple and the advantage to knowing what you're doing here the advantage to this is you could do anything so let's say you want to do Mustangs basketball you can use the same technique and just you instead of the word basketball and mom you just put Mustangs and basketball so uh, whatever you want to do is very, very easy to do. And, of course, think baseball, basketball, football. I mean, it goes on and on and on. So let me show you how ridiculously simple it is. We select our mom text. We come over here and find this envelope tool. When you apply an envelope initially to text, 
there are two nodes right here in the middle, each direction. We delete those. We're dealing with just the four corners. We're going to select this and drop it right there. That's why we put that guideline there. And then we're going to take this node, click and drag, take this node, click and drag, take this node, click and drag. And I think you can already see how quickly this is coming together. So then we'll just take this and pull it straight down. There you go. And then you can kind of fine tune this over here if you want to. And you can get this exactly the way you want it. Now I was playing around with this earlier. And you see this little this little tail here on both sides? I actually wanted to get rid of that. So what I did, just playing around here, is I actually pulled this outside the circle just that much. So my tail was outside the circle. So this is kind of extra credit. All right, so there is how we got the word mom. So let's take that in our circle. And this is where the extra credit comes in. Let's go ahead and close out that. So what we want to do is anything that extends beyond the circle, we want to trim away. And the easiest way to do that is to take our circle, come over here to our shaping docker here in CorelDRAW. Now, if you don't have your shaping docker open, go to the window menu, choose dockers, and then you'll come down to shaping. And what we're going to do is take our circle and intersect our text. And what happens is we actually get a new object. And you see that? So the old object right there. So we're going to delete our old object. And now our, our mom has been trimmed back to the shape of our circle. Okay? I just think that's kind of cool the way, the way we can do that. All right. So the basic technique is the same for basketball. So we take our word basketball, we apply an envelope to it, we just click on our envelope tool, we delete those two vertical nodes, we delete the two horizontal nodes, we pick up the whole kit and caboodle, we move it to the intersection point, right? And then we just take this node, pull it back over to here, we take this node, we pull it back over to here, we take this node, we pull it back over to here, we take this, and we stretch it up there, and then we take these control handles and fine tune and finesse. And you will see up top here, we definitely have a bigger gap because of the way we went about adding that uh, additional spacing there. Okay. So there is basketball. And then this, this is the piece we're going to use for mom. So we'll go ahead and pull this down. Told you it was ridiculously simple, didn't I? Very, very easy to do. Okay? And, of course, it's a great-looking result. But now what we need to do is we need to add in these lines. Now, this is a little bit more tricky, but it's actually quite simple to do. I'll just share with you my logic. You would probably import a, b a basketball image to kind of use as a guide. I've created so many basketballs, I don't need a guide. But let me just show you my logic. We'll just go ahead and slice your, your ball dead in half. And then you kind of take where, where half would be going the other direction and go above that. <laughs> um, I don't know how much. You just above it a little bit. So you have something like that. And then what I do is you see where this is and this is. I, I eyeball where half is. And then down here, same thing, where half is. I go half a half. Okay, so there, if you go roughly, that's half. This is half, roughly. So this would be, this point right here is half a half. And then the rest of it, I just, I guesstimate. <laughs> because I don't get too worried about it. Because I can, we'll come back in and fine tune. So remember, from he here to here, this is half. This would be half. So this is half a half. That's just kind of rules of thumb with basketballs that I've created <laughs> just for the fun of creating it. All right. So this curve looks pretty good. Let's go to our shape tool here. That curve doesn't look so bad. Um, let's go ahead and delete that. And then this here, I'm just going to use the smooth option to smooth it out. So you can see it's a little bit more. Now This is a little bit, probably a little bit more wonky. I don't know. So we'll delete this. And then we can come in here 
and you know you could use your your um, control handles here and then we're going to right click and smooth that out as well all right so now we could delete the outside circle because we don't need that no more and now we just have our lines and let's go ahead and make our basketball text orange now for the line thickness here what we're going to do is we're going to select all of our lines so i'm going to hold down the alt key and click and drag our lines come over to our outline pen tool here and let's i don't know let's give it let's start with 10 points for this example okay we're going to actually make these lines a little bit thicker here in a moment um, so we'll start with 10 points to begin with and then what we're going to do here if we go to the view menu and choose wireframe you can see those lines actually have no thickness at all even though we just gave them a thickness and that's because we need to convert this to an object so under the arrange menu convert to object now those lines have been converted to an object they do have a thickness now we're going to weld those lines together so now you have one object and now we're going to take those lines and just kind of slap it over our basketball mom here. Now I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger to make sure those lines are completely covering up basketball mom. And let's go back to enhance mode. And you can see how things are kind of coming together. Now, this is where things get a little bit murky. And you're going to have to watch this portion of the video maybe a dozen times to really understand the design principles here. So here's what we need to do. We need, first of all, where the black is sitting on top of the orange, orange needs to go away. If we were only doing a, um, a, a regular heat press vinyl material, we wouldn't have to go this extra step here. But because we're doing glitter on top of glitter, for this particular example, we have a bit more work to do. So let's just go through the process, and then once we're all done, we'll explain why we did what we did because I think it'll make more sense to you. So we have the black line sitting on top of Basketball Mom. What we need to do is wherever the orange is underneath, it needs to go away. So we select our lines, and then we're going to come over here to Trim, and we're going to trim our orange. And this trimmed, you can see that trimmed our orange mom. And then we're going to select our lines, and we're going to trim Basketball. So now let's go ahead and look at stage one. There is our orange that has been trimmed. So this is what we would cut out of our first color of glitter material. Now, here's where things get a little bit dicey. What we, the next thing we need to do is the black lines. Right now, the black lines, because we use the black lines to trim the orange, the black line and the orange are going to match up right at the same edge. What we actually need to do is make our black lines a little bit thicker. And to do that, we're going to use our contour tool because we want our black lines to ever so slightly overlap the orange. And in the industry, we call it trapping. So we want the black line to trap our orange. So, and then the reason we do that is because if we didn't line it up absolutely perfectly, the shirt color would show through where these two colors intersect. We do the same thing when we're doing artwork for screen printing as well. It's basically the same type of setup um, where we use a bit of a trapping. Um, so at any rate, uh, what we're going to do is take our black lines, come over here to our contour tool, and we're going to contour one millimeter to the outside. Okay, And now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and right click Let's change this color so we can see the contour. See the pink? So we've contoured to the outside. So now what we need to do is let's go ahead and delete our black here. We delete that. So now what we need to do is we need to modify this. Right now you can see this is uh, the one that we're using and we actually don't want that. We want the solid one. You see this one's still solid? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna use the solid version Put it right on top. And what we're going to do now is we're going to tell CorelDRAW to take the solid version of mom and intersect our pink. So let's do that. Let's go back to intersect here. Intersect with pink. Now what you actually got here, let me change the color so we can see it. We got a new, see those new set of lines? Everywhere where there's an edge, it's gone away. Okay, now this isn't going to make absolutely any sense to you at this point, but once we bring all the pieces together, you're going to go, aha, 
That makes sense. All right. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get there. All right. So now we need to do the same thing with basketball. We're going to select basketball, intersect with our pink lines. Then let's change the color of what we just did. So now you can see. Now you can see, right? All right. So now everything is an absolute confusing mess. And that's okay because it's all going to come together right now. So what we're going to do is take the pink pieces that we just created using this fancy intersect function. And we're going to just kind of superimpose them over here. How do we place them, though? Well, it, it's going to differ. And you, what you're going to do is we're just going to look for some type of, of sign from above where these pink lines should go. And, and we'll cue in here somewhere there's going to be a good spot for these uh, to line up perfectly. So the first thing I might do is just take this and put it right here. Okay, now obviously this doesn't line up with beans. All right, so what we're doing is we're looking for something that is going to line up well. Um, so let me just kind of give a quick scan here. What if we put that there? Well, no, that's not going to line up very well. You can see, see this is what I'm talking about? This is why we use that trapping method, um, because we need to. And I, I think this, if we position this here, no, that's not going to cut it. Let's see here. There's got to be somewhere here. There's got to be a the right spot here. Let's look. And this is always tricky. I mean, this is just part of the design process here. I know what I'm looking for, but I'm not seeing it. Um, but it'll come to me here in a moment. We're looking for some kind of connecting point, maybe right here. Nope, that's not it. Maybe here. Aha, we found it. <laughs> so what we did is we're finding some common connecting point between pink and orange. And this was it right here. Um, so we did find it. And so now you can see that everything lines up. You can see it just lines up absolutely perfectly. There is another common connecting point we could have used. Um, so now we, we have the uh, pink sitting right on top of our orange like it should be. So let's look and see what we actually did in this whole part of the process. Go back to the view menu and choose wireframe here. See what we did? What, what essentially is happening is that secondary glitter color is slightly overlapping the original glitter color and creating a trap. So we have a little bit of wiggle room. We have one millimeter of wiggle room when we're lining these colors up. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and apply some glitter here to this. And so we'll come in here to our specialty tab, and we'll choose glitter here. And let's go ahead and apply, let's see here. Let's go ahead and apply orange, and we'll apply orange, and then we'll apply silver, and then we'll apply silver. And rest assured now, we'll go ahead and apply weed box as well. But rest assured now, everything, if we, we go ahead and send this to the cutter and cut, and then we're going to lay down our orange, and then we're going to align our silver. We've got a one millimeter wiggle room. Align, 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 snap it. we got it perfect. Press it, uh, that second color, and you'll have a great looking design. Um, so I say it's pretty easy to do, and it really honestly is. doesn't take that long at all to actually do it once you get in there and you understand the process. Creating that secondary color and the trapping, now that does actually take a little bit of work. Um, but that's just how it is. Um, so anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope you try this out and create you know, a similar design using your own text and what have you. And maybe even post it to our Facebook page and say, hey, look at, I created my masterpiece. But I think you're really going to uh, appreciate this design. And once you get in there and try it out, and if you don't have CorelDRAW, download a demo uh, at corel.com and, and, and try this technique out because it is actually a really neat technique and you can create lots of really cool designs this way. Thanks for watching.